Oh, hey there, guys. It's Phil Ellis, and thanks for tuning in to episode two. So excited. Uh, the feedback from the last episode was just beyond belief. I mean, I, it made me cry. Uh, so I'm back in the loft, uh, or attic. So I've been through a few boxes, and I've found one that's got a few pretty exciting things in it. Now this box really does show you how cool I was uh, as a kid at school. So um, start off with a Star Trek comic there. Um, the next generation, TNG, if you're an aficionado. Uh, we've got Riker there and Picard. Um, I don't know if you've seen the latest series, Picard. Uh, I genuinely believe it's one of the most boring things I've ever seen. And I was so excited about it. But it takes like six episodes before he even sits in a spaceship. It's just him walking around like a fucking wine grove. This is cool. Masters of the Universe. And I am a master of my own universe. Uh, I'm definitely the master of this extension, anyway. And I've put a little sign on the door saying, Do not disturb. So hopefully, we should be alright for another 10 minutes. The year is 1982. E.T. has just broken every box office record at the cinema. The Falklands War is in full swing, and Come On Eileen is no longer a crude order, but a number one single. But another historic moment was about to take place, and that was the release of He-Man by Mattel. Disappointed after missing out on the sales license for the Star Wars figure range in 1976, Mattel ordered their top designer, Roger Sweet, to think of a new toy line to rival those space pricks. And my god, he delivered. But he didn't go forward in time to do so, even though Star Wars is technically a long, long time ago. But he's futuristic, isn't it? He went back. It's rumoured that Roger Sweet came up with the idea for He-Man after watching Conan the Barbarian and getting a slight chub on. He-Man made over $38 million in its first year alone and went on to make over $2 billion worldwide. To put that into perspective, that's how much Jeff Bezos' his left foot is worth. But it wasn't always such a success story. At first, superstore giant Toys R Us told Mattel to, in not so many words, fuck off, pointing out that no one knew who the hell He-Man was. And to look at him on the shelves, you might mistake him for some kind of Aryan action figure. So Mattel just lied and said that there was a cartoon coming out. And that's when Masters of the Universe was born, which was basically a 20 minute toy advert every week. He-Man was so popular that he even got his own live-action film in 1987, starring Dolph Lundgren in the title role and co-starring Courtney Cox. The film was made by Canon Pictures, who had had recent success with such classics as Over the Top, Life Force and Superman IV The Quest for Peace. Sadly, the film was a box office bomb, but thanks to the fact that Courtney Cox was in it and being chased around by a small person in a rubber mask for about an hour and a half, it meant that there was plenty of footage for all those before they were famous talking head shows. But He-Man's popularity had already started to dwindle and he was being replaced by a new breed of hero. He's still regarded though as one of the toughest toys in the ship. Cracking stuff here, look at that fight scene there, there's like a, a vehicle, look at He-Man actually looks a bit like, uh, he's looking quite sexually at Skeletor as he's wrestling him to the ground, it's quite homoerotic actually, He-Man, there he is there just chilling out, you know, with his little pants on and his little He-Man outfit, it, it, I've got the figure of this, now I have to go in another loft and get all the other figures out, but I've got this hairy fuck. Hey man, who can forget furry ball bag? And I, I had him as well. And that one, he was rubbish. All his bits came off and you could like stick them together different ways, but he ended up losing his arms. And I think my version of that guy, so I'd be able to make him like with two heads and loads of arms. I've just got basically one head and an arm. He's basically, he's a quadriplegic. My figure, it's not very scary, is it? Not, uh, nothing against quadriplegics. They can do great things. I just wouldn't want, if I was going into battle, I would not choose to take with me a quadriplegic, if you know what I mean. Like, if I, had to have a, if I was planning a team, if I was assembling a team for a fight, a quadriplegic would be quite low down on the list, is what I'm saying. And this hairy fuck, actually, because I, 
It's just flammable, isn't it? And this guy can fuck off a bit. It looks like he's going to a cosplay Halloween party or something, don't it? To be honest, I wouldn't have any of these guys in my gang. I'd just take that, um, just take Tyson Fury and just liquor him up. And just fucking say, I've got that bloke. Hey, Tyson, he man called your mum a slag. Fucking off he goes, you know. Anyway. so much for watching this week's episode guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope it lifted your spirits a little bit also informed you and please do like and subscribe and click that button and comment i love receiving comments uh one uh, subscriber called uh, win something said that they used to have a garbage pail kid and um well, they went on a bit well a bit of if you are going to comment make it concise okay uh, mr peacock said hey uh, why are you wearing your dad's shirt go fuck yourself mr peacock if that is your real name genuinely go fuck yourself Okay, we don't need that, those kind of comments. Make them nice. Uh, and if you dislike the video, you're a fucking idiot. I know this is a great show, and I've got a third in media production, okay? Which um, is apparently almost impossible. But uh, you get a 2-2 two -two just watching fucking Jaws. Anyway, tune in next week, and do comment. It's always nice to hear from you guys. And take care of yourselves and each other.